So first, I'd like to thank the organizers for this nice conference. And I hope I'll be fast so everybody can go for lunch. Uh, but so I'll talk. I, now you are going to change to classical long range interactions again. Uh, so I'll talk about topological approach to microeconomical thermodynamics and phase transition interacting classical spins. So I don't have a Robin Hood in my place, but I will want to use 10 seconds to advertise so the universe I'm coming from. Uh, and the first plot I want to show is the like temperature plot. So it has function of time, that it's between 22 and 34 uh, along the year. And I want to say that because we now have six positions open. So then maybe someone is interested in doing nice physics and be in a nice place as well. So but the thing that I'm talking about today, it's uh, like it was recently submitted to, to archives uh, like two weeks ago and has to do with this work that it's now under evaluation. Uh, but I want to give a very short introduction. So this work has to do with previous works from like Lapu, Cassetti, Mikhail Kasten, and other like researchers that are now here as well. Uh, but I, I'll say that the first work on this topic comes from the 1997 when uh, like studying the dynamics of uh, some classical systems. So it was conjectured that maybe uh, non analyticities in, in like critical points related to phase transitions were due to uh, proper change in the topology of configuration manifolds, like in that potential manifolds. So then that, there was a, a quite exciting period because there were many works on this uh, feature and there, there were many exemplars on that. Uh, but for now, for today, I will talk about only for the Hamiltonian mean field model. I think maybe one in three talks are about this model uh, like today. So basically, so then we, I want to remember this, this work as well. So basically, for that model, it was shown that uh, a topological change in the potential manifolds like associated to the Hamiltonian uh, were like the kind of the origin of the of a phase transition in, in that model. And at that time, there was a so-called topological hypothesis that uh, maybe a phase transition were uh, directly connected to a topology change in the configuration space. So, and then like most of the work is based, uh, at least the uh, technicalities, is, uh, is based in this work 2003 from Lapu and, and Petin and Cohen. And I want to remark as well that in 2004, there was like a theorem like stating like this theorem is not for long range models, but it's a necessity theorem, which claims that uh, it, under certain, certain conditions, uh, you may have a uh, uh, necessity condition that a phase transition is related to a topology change in the configuration space. So uh, that is a really short uh, review of, on it. And just the thing that I want to focus today is in a topological invariant because that was the first, like, among many topological invariants, that was the topological invariant that, uh, like, people focus on. So basically, if you remember, like, basic high school, you see that in, like, convex polyhedra, you know that, like, vertices minus edges plus face is a constant equals to two for, like, convex polyhedra, and then you can generalize this this definition for any dimensions, and then you can compute this for your like Hamiltonian like equipotential surface and stuff like that. And in that work that I just mentioned, it, so that was the first time like at least I know that was introduced in this con contest. Uh, <clears throat> it was shown that there was a huge topological change in, in at the critical energy level, like at the phase transition for the Hamiltonian mean field model. So I can give more details, or you can go to the reference. But basically, most of the critical points are very, very close to the, the phase transition. There is a huge like, attachment of critical points in, in that level. And then we can, so we, we found a one-one relation between the critical energy and topological change in the, in the critical uh, point. So, but then maybe you can have a question, because uh, 
So if you, uh, if you assume that the a topological change in, in, in a potential manifold is associated to, to a phase transition, we can also think about connection with other ensembles or with thermodynamics. Because when you are in, in microcanonical ensembles, a simple derivative of our entropy gives us the temperature. So then I will focus today on how we could, if you assume that you can study the, uh, the, like systems in that way, how we could find a critical temperature using these methods. So basically, the first thing we would guess, OK, if you think that this quantity represents some sort of uh, topological entropy or Euler entropy, we would like to try to make kind of the deriv derivative of this quantity. And then we would try to find uh, temperature with that. So then if you try to do that, we are not so happy with these results. So this is just uh, the derivative. Like if you try a numerical derivative of this curve, because this quantity is, a, is an integral number. So you cannot define properly how to do this uh, numerical derivative because of these fluctuations in this quantity. So then I would like to use other tools from applied topology to, to construct a new or not uh, appropriate definition for this derivative. And then we may connect this derivative with the phase transition and, and, uh, and the critical point and things like that. So uh, just to, uh, to make clear how we, like, this the kind of uh, concept emerges from, from this uh, historical like, review. At some point in 2003, it was conjectured also that at least around, so I just took this, this sentence from that paper in 2003. So at least around the transition, the entropy should behave like uh, similarly to the Euler characteristics in the sense that this, uh, the entropy could be split in two parts, one analytical part and one non-analytical part. And so the non-analytics could be uh, uh, found through the Euler characteristics or through this topological invariance. So, and then that motivates us to, to search for this like, kind of topological derivative. And then later, like we, we had new results, we included also dynamics uh, in this uh, approach. So we, we, so there is a like uh, outstanding result from Michael Kasten in 2008 that uh, he basically and his collaborators did, developed a necessity condition so we can we could go, like verify that there is a phase transition after computing some geometrical quantities that I call now density of Jacobian's critical points. So I want you to to remember that curve for the infinite hinge X Y model because so. Basically, if you find a divergence in this quantity at the critical point, so this is a necessary condition to, to find a, a phase transition, uh, but not sufficient. So I want you to, to remember this result because uh, since this is a not sufficient condition, we may can uh, ask what are the conditions of when this divergence happens, not only at the phase transition. So. And then until 2008, I would recommend a review in these uh, three kind of three papers, like by like Lap with collaborators and Kasten in the book by Petini. But so it's not always a bed of rose. So because this, that was a kind of a, a trial to do a general theory that could describe topology in terms uh, so statistical mechanics in terms of topology of configuration space and things like that. But then after like, this many years of research, uh, it was found a contraexemplar of this theorem that, that I just showed to you uh, two minutes ago. And basically for the 5-4 model, it was shown that this hypothesis does not work well. So, uh, and then made this made the area to be a bit uh, calm, so that because there was not uh, this like search for universality was not at all a question anymore. Uh, but so it, I'm aware that there is uh, a new work on archives that that may want to circumvent this topic. But I'm I don't have technical like uh, I I cannot judge the technicalities of this work. But I'm aware 
of, of these uh, like kind of extension of the topological approach so that may fix or extend this theorem or not, but this is still an open question. Uh, but anyway, so that's how science evolves. And we cannot do a universal theory, but I would like to discuss, so if you assume that this approach works, what can we do? What can we find? So could we find also temperature like, like we do with microcanonical ensemble and find a uh, connection with like an ensemble, things like that? So then that's what I want to, to address. So there was also some, not counterexamples, but uh, model systems that the necessity condition that I just showed you also don't work, that, that one about uh, the paper in 2008. It's like, just to sit an example that it's on an audience as well, like the paper by Tassizio 2011 also shows that these, uh, these uh, dynamic approach for like to study the stationary points of energy landscape also don't, does not work at all, like has a sufficient condition. So just a necessity criteria. But so that's how science evolves. So for now, after this introduction, I will make strong assumptions that I could be comfortable that I could do something with topology, okay? So then that's why I want like a warning. So we are, we are assuming now that like the distance between critical points approach zero so that at, in the thermodynamic limit, the, all the interval of energy that you are interested in in, in study like are, is dense. And basically, technically, it means that I, we are restricting our hypothesis to system that this topological approach works. And then we are going to put together these ideas with some modern ideas for applied topology. So I would recommend this book to see the ideas that we are going to discuss now. And basically, I, I want to, to answer in this context two questions. So it's possible to derive thermodynamic quantities by using information embedded only in topological invariants, like in particular the Euler characteristic. Or since the Euler characteristic is a discrete quantity, how could you perform this discrete derivation with respect to the Euler characteristic? So is it possible? Like, so at least to the best of my knowledge, how could you define a uh, topological derivative in the context of most theory and this approach? Then we have some hints for applied topology. Usually physicists are more like fast in using maths to do science, but in that moment, like I think engineers are doing faster than us, but basically because like in 1888, there was an interesting paper that you could actually do like integral calculus using this topological invariant. So you could do uh, integral calculus based on all the characters. This is, at least for physicists, for me, it was a bit a true advance in terms of technicalities. But if you go to this book in applied topology, you can understand how it, this definition works. And basically, these two guys from Bell Labs, they developed a tool to, to do enumeration and do target uh, like in networks, like kind of a, an application for robotics using this kind of integral. So then that's why there was these two nice papers very recently using this method. So and basically, if you come across to this idea of integration, you work with statistical physics, okay, if I can integrate, I can define a volume, I can define a proper entropy, and I can see what happens at least. Like that's what they aim. Like, very naively, let's, let's see what happens if you use this measure, and we can, uh, maybe find some information about this topic. So basically then we define using that like analogy with the papers that I showed, I showed you uh, that we can have a, a Euler integration, which means that basically instead of integrating like uh, summing up like a normal Riemann sum, for every level that you integrate, we compute the weights according to, to the topological invariant, like the MOS index, so that if you integrate a constant function, we, we have the, the Euler characteristic. And then uh, we can do an analogy. So this is uh, like between Boltzmann and Euler, like entropy. So like, I don't want to create an, any new entropy. And actually, that was proposed by Kalapu 10 years, a few years ago. Too. But just to, I want to compute what's the, the topological contribution for, for the entropy and how we can find this uh, critical temperature. So 
Uh, and then you can define averages and everything. So basically, the only question is how could you define a proper derivative? And then I can ask to Euler, and ba basically, there is uh, interesting results called Mossbot theorem or non critical neck theorem. Basically, if you have many critical levels, if, you're, if you want to see which topological change happens in your manifold, if you observe like an energy interval that is, less, is, is lower than uh, two critical levels, you don't see anything. You don't see any topological change. If you, if you look for a huge interval, you see too much. So basically, we choose exactly the distance between two critical points to compute this derivative. Uh, but that is a bit tricky because you should uh, change your like delta E with like time or with energy because you always have to track distance between two critical levels. So then if you do this kind of derivative, you find a, a smooth curve instead of that one I showed you before. So basically then we want to apply these ideas to this, to the Hamiltonian mean field model and I want to show that we could find actually uh, analogous results using only topological arguments to this, to this model at least. So then, then we solved this model with, in a field. So I, I'm not aware about proper solution in a field in equilibrium right? because like most focus in this model is on dynamics and stuff like that. So then we, we, may, we use this normal saddle point method, but in, we include a field in the system. And basically what we have to do is just like to track all the instabilities and stuff like that like in this uh, saddle point uh, solution. And then we can find uh, a proper classical mean field diagram for, for a, a spin system in the presence of a field that has like this kind of magnetization or like a phase transition for zero field. And then we can find like canonical diagrams and microcanonical diagrams. And also you can find stabilities. And uh, so I, I can find, find these spin down curves like that, that are related to instability. So I want to remark here that these stabilities are in the interval zero and one for field because that will be useful to some topological interpretation. And then we can find proper entropy. So the continuous lines are uh, like stable entropies. The, da the dashed lines are like unstable entropies associated to these Van der Waal loops that I just showed you. And then we start to, to try to connect these with the topology of the configuration space. So the first idea, okay, I, I can try to plot a small configuration space only with two spins, then we can see that through this diagram that basically all the instabits that we draw for a large system also holds for these uh, 2D like systems in the sense that the instabits I show you evolves with the field and then when the field is reached the, the maximum value to the instability, we don't have any stability anymore. Like you can see that this maximum approaching and measuring for field is equal to one and here you have the, the entropy and things like that. So then we do the same analogy to compute and do the same topological approach. So in the sense that we compute the index and we found the same behavior. We found for, for this interval of fields between zero and one, we found kind of stability lines uh, that has to do with uh, the Van der Waal loops as well. So we can complete and find a, a curve that is analog at least in the shape for the for the entropy, so that's what I want to show you now, basically. And then if you go back to that result I showed you, you from Kastner, we can find also relation in this divergence in that quantity that not only diverge for, for the phase transition, diverge for the whole interval that we find Van der Waal loops, and then we can characterize like topologically these Van der Waal loops as well. Uh, so then we can conclude that these singularities in this Jacobian dance that I just mentioned uh, corresponds to Van der Waal loops. And then remarkably, like, this may have to do with the Ugo Touchet talk that he gave like a few days ago, because we basically de de define uh, like an ansatz, another measure, and he mentioned that ca can be several like equivalence between measures. We basically found that uh, at least for this model, I don't, we don't know what happens for the other models, but if you compute magnetization, you use the Euler average, and the uh, both magnetization, we found same magnetization. And if you try to do analytically, you can also find 
critical temperature only using this, this definition. So basically that was the, the main result that we found. It's very technical, but I tried to summarize. We can also compare this with other proposals like in terms of energy, energy landscapes and past works that was uh, done like in this paper in 2003 by Lapu and Petin and Cohen. And basically, if you do this, if you try to understand using that quantity, you may have the nearly same results, but when you try to find the slope of this kind of topological uh, contribution for the entropy, the correct slopes come from the other characteristics. It's, it's, they, they differ really slightly, but when you try to find the slope, it, it, it's, it's like, like that. So the, the slope that gives you the critical temperature for a phase transition is, is like embedded in the other characteristic at the critical point. And basically, for that model, we also have like, results for short range model in the XY 1D model, actually. But since we, like, by lack of time and the focus on these conferences on long range interactions, so we, I, I, I want to stop here and conclude that we propose a topological approach that may allow established connections between thermodynamics and topology of configuration space. And we found evidence that the information embedded in the early characteristics at least in, the mo in this model, suffice to describe the magnetization and, and the canonical, micro canonical sum, pardon, uh, sorry, and at the critical temperature. And I, I would like to say that, so we studies in other classical systems and related contexts, like the context of energy landscape and things like that, are very, very desirable. So that's, that was what we did.